Alexa, ask AnswerBot question. Who played against IBM Watson in Jeopardy? Let me think about that. Alexa, ask AnswerBot. I think Ken Jennings is correct with 35.27% confidence. Alexa, ask AnswerBot question. Which company manufactures Gorilla Glass? Let me think about that. Alexa, ask AnswerBot. I think Corning is correct with 100.0% confidence. Now, Alexa, ask AnswerBot question, which worldwide retail chain makes the most profit? Let me think about that. Alexa, ask AnswerBot. I think Walmart is correct with 48.787% confidence. Let's get into the video now. So hello there and welcome to another tutorial. My name is Tanya Bakshi and this time we're going to be going over how you can use the Alexa Skills Kit with the Lozant IoT platform and IBM Watson, in this case my Ask Tanya application which we'll be getting into in just a little bit in order to create an intelligent Alexa application or in fact skill that can answer your natural language questions. Getting a little bit deeper into it, let's start off with the part that I'm sure you're most interested interested in and that is the Alexa yes that's right in fact just last week I was in Las Vegas and I was there for a keynote for milestone systems for their MIPS conference and while I was there they were actually giving participants as a welcome gift uh, I was on echo dots and so I got few as well now I'm ready and I thought you know why not create a YouTube video on how the Alexa skills kit actually works and how you can use it to develop skills for your own Alexa device and then of course publish it to their sort of app store or skill store I guess you could call it uh, for other people to use as well and so I thought why not why create a regular skill when I can combine a lot of the other technologies that I use in order to create an even better and even more useful Alexa skill. In fact, today I'm actually taking one of my very first IBM Watson applications, one that's not only maintained but developed actively and is in fact open source on my GitHub page called Ask Tanme. Ask Tanme is an NLQA or a natural language question answering system that can answer your natural language questions that have a person, organization, or location answer type. It uses the power of IBM Watson natural language classifier and natural language understanding in its back end as well as bidirectional attention flow by Allen AI Institute. All right, now let's get a little bit deeper into how the actual Alexa skill works and how this new topic of the Lausant IoT platform actually ties in with it. Let's take a look. All right, now getting a little bit deeper into it, let's start off with taking a look at, at the flow of the application. Now, of course, we have the Alexa itself. In this case, I've got an Echo Dot device, but any Alexa will work. You could even use the simulator online. You could use Amazon's official Alexa simulator. All of these devices will work perfectly for this. Now, once you've gotten your Alexa device up and running and you're ready to start off, what you need to do is sign up for a platform called a Lausant IoT platform. Now, when you're designing an Alexa app, you have two, but you have two way, two methods to go down, two roads to go down. Either you can use AWS Lambda, which is what's recommended by Amazon. And if you use Lambda, which is Amazon's serverless compute platform, then what happens is you're going to be using uh, this on, of course, Amazon Web Services. Uh, and just in case you were wondering, Amazon Alexa Skills Kit is not part of the Amazon Web Services. Uh, they are entirely separate. They're part of the Amazon Developer Console suite. Um, and so, uh, in this case though, I didn't want to have to take you into the world of Amazon Web Services just yet. Let's stay, uh, let's actually try and develop something with a REST API to keep it local on our own server. 
And so what I've done is I've actually gone through, I guess you could say, uh, a different way of creating an Alexa skill. And the Lausanne IoT platform is a very easy way of doing this. Because what happens is through the Lausanne, uh, uh, the Lausanne IoT platform, I don't need to do any manual authorization or the SSL certificates or anything else that Amazon requires you to do when you're working with this technology. Uh, and so, using Lausanne, I actually open up an HTTP endpoint and this HTTP endpoint can be contacted via Alexa. We'll talk about that in just a moment. Now, once we've gotten that Lausanne to IoT platform up and running, after that we have to take a look at what exactly Lausanne will allow our Alexa to communicate with. In this case, we're actually communicating with, of course, Ask Tanme, which is my cognitive application built using IBM Watson. We'll get into that in just a little bit. Now actually, there's an entire suite of applications that we're going to be using, and they're built in Python. So let's reserve this section for Python. All right, there we go, this is our Python section. Now we've also got a Flask. Now this is actually built in the Flask API. Uh, this is a Flask HTTP server. Again, built in Python. Apart from that, uh, we have a few more modules in Python, including an answer cache, and I'll talk about what that is in just a second. All right. So now these are the three main components inside of our Python tool suite here. And let's take a look at how all of these actually incorporate together. However, the thing is, this is running locally on my system. And why mess around with port forwarding when we could just use NGROC or NGROK? And so, of course, in the cloud here, we've got NGROK, and the GROK is going to allow Lausanne to communicate with my Flask HTTP server. Now, let's take a look into this. Now, one more thing I would like to say here is I'd like to say a huge thank you to Mark Sudervant, who is actually a developer advocate at IBM, for actually helping me build and fix a few issues with the Alexa skills kit. See, the thing is, when you're working with Ask Tanme, you want to ask or find the question that the user is asking the system. In order to do that, you don't just want an intent. You want the fact, you want the raw utterance of what the user said. Unfortunately, Amazon doesn't support this. However, using a workaround that Mark's helped me actually figure out using slots, which we'll be talking about in the actual programming part, we've been able to extract that raw utterance. Uh, and of course, uh, using that, I can actually send that over to Ask Tanme, and then Ask Tanme can give the answer back over to the Alexa. All right, let's take a little bit of a deeper look now. Now, of course, when you ask the Alexa a question, what's happening is let's just say you say, Alexa, ask, and in, in this case, the invocation name for the application is AnswerBot. Okay, so the, this is the invocation name. Uh, and then you say question, and let's just say our question is ABC. Doesn't matter what it is. Okay, now this is what you tell your Alexa. Now, once you give your Alexa a question, instead of actually having this quote here, let's just have questions as a variable so you can see this a little bit better and as a sort of diagram here. So let's just say you've got your question. So you've asked the Alexa the question and you've told it that you want this question to go over to the answer bot invocation name. Now, once you've told that, the Alexa is going to try and figure out what to do. In this case, it's going to go ahead and contact the Lausanne HTTP server. Now what Lausanne is going to figure out is actually find out what you're asking. Are you asking a new question or are you trying to figure out the answer to a question you've asked previously? I'll talk about why this is important in just a moment. Now let's just pretend, of course, we take this question through Lausanne and now Lausanne wants to send this over to the Flask HTTP because remember, in this Flask HTTP, we've got an endpoint called Alexa skill. All right, so this is our endpoint over here. This is the HTTP endpoint that Lausanne is going to call through NGROK. And so it goes through NGROK and, of course, comes over to the Alexa skill endpoint. 
Now, once it's at this endpoint, the interesting stuff starts to happen. See, this endpoint is actually going to contact the Astanme system, which itself is an isolated system. Now, Astanme is going to store the answer in an answer cache. Now, why is this, you may ask? You see, Astanme is efficient. In fact, I've actually rewritten Astanme from scratch in Python to make it as efficient as possible. It's even more accurate than before as well. However, it's not efficient enough for Alexa to answer instantly. Because of this, Alexa doesn't really work out with Astanme immediately. And so what you need to do is tell Alexa the question. Alexa will tell you that it's thinking of the answer. And two or three seconds later, you can ask Alexa for that answer. Because Alexa expects an immediate reply from the Astanme HTTP endpoint. In fact, let's see a demo of this in action. Now, of course, this is on mute. So let's actually unmute our Alexa and take a look at how the application works. Alexa, ask AnswerBot question, which company is Elon Musk the CEO of? Let me think about that. All right, so as you can see, uh, Alexa is now thinking about the answer to this question. And now in theory, if the speech recognition actually worked out nicely, what I should be able to do is this. Alexa, ask ans Alexa, ask AnswerBot. I think Tesla Motors is correct with 100.0% confidence. There we go. That's a lot of confidence. And so as you can see, I asked this Alexa, uh, which company Elon Musk was the CEO of? And it guessed Tesla Motors with 100% confidence. Now let's take a look at something a little bit deeper, shall we? Alexa, ask AnswerBot question who is the CTO of IBM Watson? Let me think about that. All right, so now the Alexa has actually sent the request over to Ask Handmade through the Lausanne IoT platform, and it is now processing. Now, after around two to three seconds of processing, we can do this. Alexa, ask AnswerBot. I think Rob High is correct with 58.212% confidence. There we go. As you can see, it says Rob High is the correct answer. Uh, and Rob High, of course, my mentor, is indeed the correct answer. He's the CTO of IBM Watson. Now, though, let's take a look at one last quick demo, and then we'll get back over to the actual architecture of the system itself. Let's take a look. Alexa, ask AnswerBot question. Which company is the largest fast food chain in the world? Let me think about that. All right, Alexa's thinking. Again, it sent that request over to Ask Tanme. Ask Tanme is doing all the processing using IBM Watson. And now, Alexa, ask AnswerBot. I think McDonald is correct with 96.621% confidence. That went very smoothly. And so as you can see, Ask Tanme was able to give us the correct answer and it's to this super affordable, super convenient Alexa interface. Anyway, back to the architecture. Hope you enjoyed that demo. You'll be seeing a lot more in the programming part. All right. So now, of course, we've got this entire system, and you now understand why the answer cache is important. And this is also why we can't just have one individual endpoint. We can't just have the Alexa skill endpoint. We need to have one extra. Now, this extra endpoint is going to allow this Lozant HTTP to actually grab the answer once Ask Tame is done processing it. Now, this endpoint is called slash get answer. All right. In fact, just so you actually see a little bit of a clearer picture of what these endpoints actually do, let's list down the endpoints over here. Now, of course, at first, in our HTTP endpoints, we've got the Alexa skill endpoint. All right. Now, slash Alexa skill. Now, the parameters that this is going to take in First of all, it's going to take the question. And this is the question that the user asks. Okay. Number two, it's going to take the user ID. Now, this is actually just user in the rest call. 
and users a unique user identification number that Amazon gives us. It's a very long string that actually gives us the ID of this user. It's entirely unique to that user, and we use this to store their answer in the answer cache without needing the sort of question which other people may have asked as well. All right. Now after that, though, we of course do have one more endpoint, and this endpoint is the slash get answer HTTP endpoint. In terms of parameters, we take only one parameter, and this is the user ID parameter. And the reason we take this parameter, of course, is to find out what the user's answer is, and it returns a string, which is exactly what the Alexa needs to say out. You know what it said, I think McDonald is the correct answer with such percent confidence? That is exactly the string that getAnswer actually outputs, and that's what AskTame computes. And so this string will go back over to Lazat and into Alexa like so. So now imagine this. You've asked your question to Alexa already, but now you want to retrieve the answer to your question. So you send the retrieve command. All right? So you send the retrieve command. Now this is, of course, with our red get answer endpoint. And so once you send this over to your Lausanne to HTTP, what's going to happen is again, through NGROK, Lausanne is going to go over to the get answer uh, endpoint. Once it's at the get answer endpoint is again where all the fun starts to come in. Because what's going to happen now is it's going to go over into the answer cache and it's going to ask for that, for that user ID's answer. The answer cache is going to send a response and this time what's going to happen is through NGROK, it's going to respond over to Losant. And then Losant is going to send this final response and let's just say this goes over through Lausant, it's going to send it over to your Alexa. And it's going to tell the Alexa exactly what it needs to say. And this is sort of an architecture diagram of what all truly happens. See, the best part of using the Lausanne IoT platform once more is that we need to do almost no code at all for the Alexa skill. The only real code here is this part, this part, and this part. That's it. Everything that's not Python requires no code, and it's done entirely in a graphical user interface, whether it be with the Alexa Skills Kit uh, console, a development environment, or whether it be the Lazant IoT platform, their graphical user interface. And GROK isn't really anything you need to program with anyway. Uh, and then, of course, under the Python, Flask HTTP, relatively simple Flask server. I'll be showing you the code behind that in just a minute. The answer cache, again, very, very simple code. And Ask Tame, that's where the real meat comes in. In fact, Ask Tame itself does have quite a few different steps. What it's able to do is actually use a search engine. In this case, it uses the Google Search API. And what it does is it doesn't actually extract pages. It doesn't extract different pages from which to find answers. It only extracts summaries. What do I mean by summaries? Well, it actually has a step called search engine result summary extraction. And you know when you Google something and you see those little descriptions under the little links that show the parts of the web page that are most important to your query? That is what Aztan may actually parses. It's going to grab all of those from the API and then it's going to use a bi-directional attention flow from Allen AI with my own sort of modifications to that. And what it's going to do is try and find some kind of answers to it. It's also going to use IBM Watson Natural Language Classifier in order to find out what kind of response you're looking for, whether it be a person, organization, or location. Once it knows what you're looking for, it'll filter out according to that using the Natural Language Understanding API to find out what all the different answers are. And then once it's done that, it's going to do a little bit of naive answer scoring, uh, try and score based off of repetition, and it's also going to score uh, based off of page rank score. So you know that Google uses the page rank algorithm along with now different deep learning algorithms. But it's going to use that score in order to rank better answers that are towards the top of the list uh, with more confidence. And that is how the entire Ask Tanmay system works. Of course, Ask Tanmay and how it works is an entire video in itself. But in essence, it's able to use a combination of TensorFlow, Watson Natural Language Understanding, and Watson Natural Language Classifier in order to uh, get answers 
from the web uh, from your natural language questions. So that's a quick brief of Ask Tamer, what that does, and how everything else, including the Alexa skill, the Lausanne Privacy Platform, MGROK, the Flask HTTP server, and the Answer Cache and Ask Tamer work together, and how they actually enable me to ask this Alexa any natural language question and get an answer around 95% of the time. All right, so I hope you enjoyed that quick demo and of course the architecture explanation of how exactly this all works. Now though, what I'd like to do is I'd like to take you over to the programming part where I'm going to show you how you can actually build a skill for this Alexa. And I'm gonna take you through how exactly I built this entire system, uh, how you take the raw utterance from the Alexa skills kit over to the Lausanne ISU platform and it's run it through the entire pipeline. All right, let's get into the programming part now. All right, so welcome back. And now let's take a look at how you can actually implement this Alexa system. All right, now what I'd like to do first of all is show you what's actually going on in the back end. Now I've actually got my Alexa here with me. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this on, unmute it. And I'm going to go over uh, to, of course, you can see the Amazon Alexa skills kit here. But I'm also going to go over to these two terminal windows. These two terminal windows contain, of course, the NGROK server. This is actually running on a custom subdomain, actually. Uh, and, of course, on this side over here, I've got my Python server, which is hosting the Flask HTTP endpoints of Get Answer and Alexa skill. And, of course, it's also hosting the Answer Cache and Contacts Ask Tanme. In fact, an entirely new redesigned version of Ask Tanme uh, as well. All right, let's take a look. Now, let's actually, uh, I'm going to run a quick demo on the actual device, and let's take a look at how these two terminal windows actually react. Now, let's ask it a simple question, like just for example, Alexa, ask AnswerBot question, who is the CEO of Amazon? Let me think about that. All right, as you can see, the Alexa is now thinking about it. And Angrok has received the HTTP request. It returned a 200 OK response. And you can actually see that Ask Tanme over here has actually received a question, who is the CEO of Amazon? And the person who actually sent this is this user ID. And as you can see, Ask Tanme extracted the answer. I think Jeff Bezos, et cetera, et cetera. And it said that this answer is for user ID, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, in fact, we can actually now go back over to our Alexa and say, Alexa, ask AnswerBot. I think Jeff Bezos is correct with 72.622% confidence. All right, so as you can see, the Alexa was able to detect that, uh, or not the Alexa, the Alexa was able to send our user ID over to Ask Tanme. Ask Tanme's get answer was actually able to take that user ID uh, and it was able to extract the correct answer associated to that user ID's question. And that is how the system works. In fact, you can even see that's verified by NGROK over here, who is actually getting those requests. But wait, even NGROK has to receive its requests from Losant. So let's take a look a little bit deeper into how the system is built. In fact, I'm actually going to link to a guide on the Losant blog as to how you can build an interactive Alexa skill with no code using this Losant. All right, so this is going to be in the description. You can actually take a look at this tutorial. It's going to be very helpful, even uh, actually when you're, when you're building this application in this tutorial, uh, I'd recommend you take a look at this blog as well, just to find out a bit more about Lausanne, how it works, and what it's meant to do. In fact, just so you know, this is actually the REST API that Alexa still endpoint is actually calling. Like just for example, if I were to go to localhost 5000, which is the port it's running on, go to the Alexa skill endpoint, pass it a question, in this case, who is the CEO of Apple, and give it any random username like ABC, I run that, go back over here. As you can see, Ask Tanme has received the question and the username. Uh, Ask Tanme is now going to reply. And as you can see, Google Chrome gets the response back. Uh, and now this is what actually goes back to Lausant, or back into the answer cache. And then when you ask for the answer, Lausant is going to receive it from the answer cache and give it back to the Alexa. All right, but let's start from the basics here. Let's start from the Amazon Alexa skills kit. Now with the Amazon Alexa skills kit, we can build chatbots and other kinds of skills for the Alexa. Now I like the new console that they've built, but you can use the old one as well if you'd like to, at least for the time being. There we go. 
All right, so as you can see, these are all my Amazon Alexa skills. You have Tanmay QA and Ask Tanmay V2. Now, Ask Tanmay. So let's actually go ahead and click on Edit. Now, when I click on Edit, you can see all the stuff that goes into this application. Let's start with the interaction model. Now, the interaction model has something called an invocation. An invocation is how the user actually begins and talks to Alexa. Like just for example, let's just say your invocation name was Daily Horoscopes. You could say something like, Alexa, ask Daily Horoscopes for the horoscope for Gemini, which is the example that, that Amazon gives us here. In this case, my invocation name is AnswerBot. So people can say, Alexa, ask AnswerBot the question, who is the CEO of IBM or Amazon or any other kind of question that you may have. There are a few requirements to your invocation name, like it cannot have phrases like launch, ask, tell, load, begin, or enable, or even wake words like Alexa, Amazon, Echo, computer, or the word skill or app. So these are the different sort of requirements for your invocation name. But that's all. Once you've got a good invocation name and you're ready to continue, we can start off by creating a slot type. Now, before we can actually create a slot type, though, we have to understand intents. If you've ever used the IBM Watson conversation service before, or for that matter, API.ai or any other kind of chatbot platform, you're familiar with these intents, but you may not be familiar with slots. So let's talk about that. Now, inside of the intents, we only have one intent, and it's called the everything intent. Remember, this chatbot does nothing. The only thing that really does something is ask Tanme. So we want to take what Whatever the user says, no matter what it may be, and send it over to Lausanne. And Lausanne can do the, the actual post processing and understand what the user actually meant. So, with the everything intent, we basically try and capture everything that the user says. Now, this includes no matter what they say, they can say question, they can say everything intent. But then after that, whatever they say after the first word will be considered part of the everything slot. And the everything slot is meant to pick up whatever the user says, doesn't matter what it is. Now, the everything slot, as you can see over here, as under the intent slot, is actually a specific slot type. The slot type is bag of words. Now this is a custom slot type. Amazon doesn't provide this by default. And so what you need to do is create a custom slot type. This slot type, uh, you can give it any value. In this case, we've given it hello world, unless you as a user specify something else in your intent, which is what you should do. Now, of course, you don't need to give this any meaningful intent or meaningful value. You just need something in order to be able to capture everything and send it over to IBM Watson. In fact, if you take a look at the IBM code pattern uh, for the Alexa, you can take a look over here that, uh, as I was mentioning, just wait for this to load for a second, Mark Stu sorry, Sturdevant and Nicholas Heidloff worked on this code pattern together, and they used I of the Amazon Alexa and IBM Watson in order to discuss the weather and build a conversation, or, in, or really just choose one from a library. Um, and so this is, this is actually based off of IBM's version of OpenWhisk. Uh, so this is, of course, IBM's serverless compute platform, similar to AWS Lambda. And so, of course, this code pattern is basically uh, is quite similar to my code uh, to my code in the way of how it actually allows Alexa to communicate with the IBM Cloud Functions, or in this case, not the IBM Cloud Functions, but Lausanne to IoT platform. All right, now let's get a little bit deeper into this. Now, you know how the intents and the slots work. Once you've built your intents and your slots, all you need to do is save and build your model. Once you've saved and built your model, though, you are ready to actually test your application. Now, this is where you can actually test out your Amazon Alexa app. Before that, though, let's head over to Lausanne. Now, as I mentioned, no code involved. However, if you want to put some code in and get a little bit more flexible there, you can. And that's what I've gone ahead and done. But this is what the uh, Lausanne flow looks like. And so, as you can see, I can just format that a little bit here. As you can see, it's a very sort of graphical user interface, similar to IBM IoT's Node Red, which is open source, unlike Lausanne. However, basically, what I'm uh, what I'm doing with Lausanne here is I'm creating a webhook. Now, this webhook is basically an HTTP endpoint that the Alexa skills can call. How does it call it? Well, if you go over to build over here, if you just wait for one second. 
as you can see, there is a button for the endpoint, and of course you can actually get that over here as well. If you click on endpoint, you can either choose AWS Lambda or an HTTPS server. In this case, I've given it to my Lausanne trigger, and of course you have to choose that this uh, my development endpoint is a subdomain of a domain that has a wildcard certificate from a certificate authority. It doesn't matter, um, that's just what Lausanne tells us to choose, because that's how Lausanne is structured. Anyway, once the webhook receives information from the Alexa skills kit, uh, then though, we actually call a custom function. Now this is a function coded in JavaScript that I've created. It's a very simple function. All this function does is it actually checks whether the intent is to actually ask a question or if the intent is to find the answer to a question that they had asked before. If they want to find the answer to a question they've already asked, then data.works is set to zero or else it's set to one if they actually want to ask a question. Once that function uh, actually goes through, there's a conditional. This conditional is whether or not they actually want to ask a question. If they do want to ask a question, then it goes down through this flow. In this flow, we actually respond to the Alexa and we say, let me think about that, which is why Alexa says, let me think about that when you ask it a question. And then over here with the HTTP, what happens is your question is sent over to that NGROK server. And of course, the question is passed. And the question in this case um, is, if I make this a little bit bigger, data.body.request.intent.slot, so everything slot.value. If you go through the JSON that the Alexa skills kit provides in the webhook, this is exactly what it looks like. And then the user ID is given over here, uh, which allows, of course, Ask Tammy to keep its answer cache. All right, so once Ask Tammy has gotten the request, then it starts doing its own processing. Uh, and of course, Alexa's already told you that it's, uh, it's, 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 it's thinking about what the actual response should be. And so now, two or three seconds later, when you ask Alexa to retrieve, uh, and when you ask Alexa to actually get the answer to your question, then a, the conditional goes over through this branch. Now, when the conditional goes through this branch, it still does make an HTTP request. In this case, the request goes to a slightly different endpoint, the get answer endpoint. And this time, not the question, but only the user ID is sent. Now, once you actually receive a response from the HTTP endpoint, in fact, if you were to take a look here, it stores that result in data.asktanme. And then I've got a, a custom JavaScript function, and what this does is it actually creates an Alexa response. Now, if you remember over here, we sent a reply to Alexa, and we sent some JSON, and the text was, let me think about it. In this function, what I do is I create a similar JSON variable, but in this case, the text is payload.data.asktanmay.body. Now, remember, asktanmay is the result from the asktanmay endpoint, and body is what asktanmay returned. And so, we're basically taking whatever asktanmay returned, and we are, basically, we are essentially giving it over to Alexa, and then, of course, we reply with this Alexa response over to the Alexa. And again, since this happens practically instantly, just a little bit of latency, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's good enough for Alexa to, uh, to, to not say, you know, there's a, the request timed out or anything of, that, anything of that sort. But now, though, let's take a little bit of a deeper dive into what Lausanne sees from its end. So now, what we can actually do is find a few debug nodes, all right? Now, these debug nodes allow us to actually print out what the system is seeing or basically doing at each step. So we can actually print out the result from the actual webhook, and this is the webhook debug. And let's just message this as um, log for webhook. All right. Now, when this when when the webhook oh, when the webhook's result is printed, it's going to tell us that this is the log for the webhook. Webhook. We can do a similar debug for, for example, let's just say um, over here. We can take a similar debug after this function. All right, and then after this function, we can take a look at what the actual result was. Final function debug or log. And then let's just put one more debug here. Why not? And let's connect this to HTTP. There we go. 
All right, so now we've got our debugs in the right places. Let's just say as Tanme result log. There we go. All right, and I'm going to deploy this workflow. I'm just going to make this a bit bigger there. All right, so just deploy this workflow. And now, as you can see, the workflow has been saved and deployed. Now, if we were to go ahead and ask the Alexa another question, it should actually print out everything in Lausanne. Now, if we go over to our debug, I'll just, I'll just remove all the previous logs. And let's go over into our uh, Alexa skills kit, go into the testing. And now what I'm going to do is test out the Alexa. Now, either I can talk to my computer and it'll simulate the Alexa, or I can just type it in. Let's try typing it in, and then next we'll try actually um, saying it. So let's just say, uh, ask answer bot question who founded, let's just say, um, Amazon. Why not? Now I'm going to send this over. As you can see, Alexa replies, let me think about that. Of course, that's exactly what we expect, and that's what Lausant replied. But let's take a look at what all Lausant actually saw. Now, as you can see, we have two different logs here. Why not three? Because this was never called. Now, the first one is the log for webhook. As you can see, right as the webhook was actually triggered, this is all the data that we had in our payload, which is the sort of group of information that we've got in this entire workflow. Now, data is where we actually try, is where we actually start to get um, all the data that came from the webhook. Now, inside of data, we've got the body, and this is the, the actual information that the Alexa sent over. Now, inside of request, you can see the intent, uh, the, the intent, uh, the intent group over here, and the name of this intent is everything intent, and there's no confirmation. Now, under slots, however, and under everything slot, you can see that the value is who founded Amazon. Now, this sounds like a little bit of a workaround because we can't get the raw utterance, and it is. But until Amazon actually provides us the functionality to get the raw utterance, we won't be able to use anything but this kind of workaround. But it's a very good workaround nonetheless, and of course, again, huge thank you to Mark for actually helping me implement this. As you can see, of course, the resolutions, that doesn't matter. All that really matters is the value. And since the application realized that the value is indeed a valid question, it sent this over through this line instead of this line, which meant that Ask Tanmay actually received um, that question and is now processing. In fact, if we go over here, you can see that NGROK received it. And as you can see, Ask Tanmay received it here as well. And it has created the, or it has thought of the answer um, and has replied and sorted in the answer cache, of course. All right, so after the log for webhook, there's also the ask Tanmay result log. Because remember, when you actually call slash Alexa skill endpoint, we actually don't return anything to the Alexa, but the endpoint itself does return some JSON. And so that JSON is never actually saved in the, um, I guess you could say, uh, in, in the payload. Uh, however, it, the, it is actually replied nonetheless. All right, next though, let's go back over to our Alexa simulator and let's try actually using uh, the, the speaking feature. Ask answer bot question retrieve. Ooh, okay. So as you can see, uh, Alexa's uh, voice voice recognition hasn't really worked out that well due to the fact that my microphone setup isn't optimal right now. It's a little uh, little funky. But if I were to go ahead and type in our question once more, as you can see, it's thinking about that once more. Uh, we can go back here. In fact, let's go over to Lazant and delete all of our logs because we don't want all that noise in there. Uh, let's go back over here and say ask answer bot. Question retrieve. Don't worry, let's uh, try that once more. All right, as you can see, Alexa does in fact respond with, I think Jeff Bezos is correct with 46.638% confidence. And that is indeed correct. Jeff Bezos founded Amazon. Now, of course, if we were to go back to Lausanne, you know that this time, of course, the log for webhook still still uh, actually went through, which is why this is printed out. But after that, this conditional went through this branch instead of this one. And so through this branch, the function goes down and we actually print out the result as well. Now, if you take a look in the final function log, we have, of course, our regular body and everything, but we also have the Ask Tanmay response, and this is what Ask Tanmay responded uh, from the get answer endpoint. 
and then we've got the Alexa response. And this is exactly the JSON that is sent over to the Alexa, and then the Alexa is able to make sense of it and actually respond with this text. And that is how the Lozant IoT platform ties in with this entire system. In general, this is all able to combine in order to allow us to create an Alexa skill that uses the power of Ask Tanme in order to answer your natural language questions. And so that sums up how you can build an Amazon Alexa skill, and not just any skill, in fact, quite a complex skill, but with hardly any coding involved, only an answer cache, the Ask Tanme system, Flask is all you need to code, everything else on the Alexa skill side is all done without code whatsoever. I really do hope you enjoyed this tutorial and that you're able to create your own Alexa skills as well. Uh, of course, thank you very much everyone for joining in today. Uh, if you have any more questions or suggestions or even feedback, please do leave it down in the comment section below. Email it to me at tajimani.gmail.com or tweet it to me at tajimani or at tajimani on Twitter. Apart from that though, uh, of course, if you do like my content and you do want to see more of it, please do consider sharing, liking this video, and of course, subscribing to my YouTube channel as it really does help out a lot. And of course, turning on the notifications if you'd like to be notified whenever I release a new video. Again, source code for this application will be available down in the description below. Ask Tanme will be updated on GitHub very soon as well uh, after some minor code cleanup within the next few days. You'll be seeing an entirely rewritten version of Ask Tanme on its GitHub page uh, where it belongs. All right, again, thank you very much everyone for joining in today. That's going to be all for this tutorial. Hope you enjoyed. Goodbye.